Welcome to the channel, my name's David. My name's James. And we have for you our first episode of Army Focus. Now, James, we, you and I have been talking about this for a long time. Oh, we have. And we've only just got around to do it. There's been a lot of stuff going on at the moment, and we finally got around to our first ever Army Focus. And we are going to feature, James and I will probably feature in it first, uh, and then we'll invite people from the community to come down for a couple of hours and talk about themselves and their armies. A lot of people have asked for this particular pe feature. Um, I get so many emails asking me, Oh, I'm going to collect this army. What would you recommend? A lot of people are saying for additional content, it'd be good to talk about the players and the army. So we thought, right, we'll just get this done. Absolutely. James and I are the guinea pigs. So um, we'll use this as a test. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And then if we need tweaking, please give us some suggestions. We'll try and tweak it to make it more, uh, more applicable, I guess. Yeah, yep. So it's fully useful information for everyone out there. Hopefully we can get all sorts of varied armies on. And uh, yeah, it'd be nice to uh, nice to showcase some beautiful heresy armies as well. So yeah, there is no doubt that if if you're into heresy, you, you've generally invested a lot of money. You know, your average heresy army costs well over a grand. Yeah, thanks, Forge World. Yeah, cheers for that. <laughs> uh, but it's a good thing because they're amazing models and they've got such rich history and uh, and fluff behind them, as we call it. Uh, and a lot of guys spend a lot of time painting their armies, and uh, uh, and it's a sight to behold a full painted army. Absolutely. Yeah, particularly when you've been collecting it for years, as you say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it is. It's nice to see them all laid out. So uh, yeah, I can't wait to have a bit of a chat about them. It's going to be great. So as I mentioned, we're going to use James as the first one in our army focus. James, can you tell us what glorious display we've got here? Yeah, we've got my around 12,000 points of Iron Warriors. Wow. Um, which uh, I've been collecting for four years. They weren't my first heresy army, but they were the first that was uh, dear to my heart. And I think when you are collecting an army in heresy, uh, the first the first and most important thing is you have to be passionate about them. Mm. So pick a legion um, that really speaks to you, both in terms of their aesthetic, in terms of their character. Mm. I'm a big I'm a big fan of the uh, the narratives, the black books, of course, and the uh, Horace Heresy no uh, novel series. Mm. And for me, the Iron Warriors are uh, really, really interesting legion. They have a very particular personality. They're not zealous for the Great Crusade. <laughs> They're not particularly uh, fervent followers of Horace when they do turn. Mm. And of course, they're one of the legions that are genuinely split. So if you collect Iron Warriors. You can play Loyalist Legions, you can yeah. play Traitor Legions, because there are so many Loyalist Iron Warriors elements, so you've got that flexibility as well. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that's a real uh, bonus for me of collecting Iron Warriors. Yeah, I, I, the, the great thing about the Iron Warriors is um, they are, and I put this in the best possible way, they are fairly straightforward to paint. Um, the Hazard Stripes can be a little bit trickier to master, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but but when they're on the table, you know, they do look a little bit dull. But when you get up close, there's a lot of character to them. Mm. And they, they're a really fantastic looking army, I think. I think so. I think their sort of dull, workmanlike appearance yeah. is one of the things that first attracted me to them, really. They they give this the impression of being a really gritty, mm. battle-hardened army, which uh, I, I really like the style of that. So, uh, yeah, they were ideal um, for that, for, from my perspective. And... Uh, 
yeah, I was inspired by Angel Exterminators, the story of Perturabo, as well as Paramar, um, mm. and uh, yeah, inspired me really to uh, go all out on the Iron Warriors. And fortunately, um, they also they're pretty handy on the tabletop as well. They're certainly a yeah. legion which uh, they are pretty. Um, Pretty competitive. They can certainly hold their own. They've got some great rights of war, some great uh, Legion-specific units. They're quite well known for their firepower, aren't they? Yeah, they yeah they are. Um, one of their rights of war is perhaps not well loved in the community. The Iron Fire. Uh, <laughs> it's not not my particular favourite, but I have used it to great effect uh, on uh, several occasions. It is amazing how many um, how many barrage templates you can put down. Yeah. <laughs> that. Uh, yeah, that certainly have an impact on the enemy. But uh, I've always been a hammer of Olympia man. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, if we could take a quick look at Iron Fire, it, it's where mm. you can put blast markers down, and then when you fire them in consecutive rounds, um, they scatter less, don't they? They do, yeah, that's right. And uh, once you've got some Iron Fire counters down mm. and you're targeting near your own units, they don't scatter at all. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, amazing if you've got Medusa's Master of Signal, Damocles Command, Rhino, yeah. Perturabo himself, particularly if he deep strikes in and guides the barrages in himself, yeah. as well as his own barrage. Uh, I've seen Iron Warrior's armies put uh, eight, nine, ten barrage <laughs> markers on <laughs> in the first shooting phase. It is hideous. But uh, uh, I've always seen this army more as a sort of siege assault battalion, really. I, I'm an aggressive player. I don't mm. like to sit back and uh, and just uh, barrage. It can be fun occasionally, but <laughs> I like to get up close and personal usually. So, uh, yeah, the Hammer of Olympia is the ride of war. I tend to find myself using a bit more. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about the Hammer of Olympia. What's, what's involved in that? Uh, you get an extra heavy support choice, which is nice, especially when you've got things like Iron Havocs and Tyrant Siege Terminators mm. to fill your slots. Um, you can assault after rapid firing <laughs> your uh, rapid fire weapons. It's a brilliant role. It really is great, yeah. Um, particularly if you're coming out of assault transports, come out, double tap, charge in. Oh, it's a disordered charge, but find it still gets the job done really yeah definitely and one of the great things about the iron warriors and their some of their special uh, special units uh, is the siege tyrant terminators i mean who mm. doesn't want a terminator with a missile launcher strapped to his back i mean yeah they're such a brilliant all-round unit uh, terminators they, they're as good in assault as normal terminators so excellent yeah and just that extra firepower on their backs and they can move and fire yeah they're great and uh deep striking with perturabo as well can be Devastating. Yeah. It's two shots in strength eight AP three. It two is, shots. yeah. It's a full cyclone missile launcher. So <laughs> yeah, they can fire their combi bolters as well. Yeah. Uh yeah, and Perturabo has a cognis signum if you pair them up. So, uh, yeah, nasty. You get an Omniscope as well, you can split one of them. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they can do all sorts. Yeah, and of course, they've still got Power Fists and Chain Fists, <laughs> uh, so you can't even just assault them to get rid of them. And they are just a fantastic all-round unit. They're pricey in points, yeah. but... They, they deserve to be. They need to be, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they are very, very cool. Mm. Um, one thing I have noticed is that you've you've got a lot of, um, I guess, a Spartan chassis uh, vehicles. So you've got the, the Cerebus, uh, yep. the Spartan, of course, and obviously the Typhon as well. Yes. You don't see many Cerebus around, if I'm honest. No, I mean, they're so outclassed by the Typhon. Sure. I, mean, I think uh, the Typhon arguably is maybe a little too good for its points yeah. it's it's uh, people used to moan about the Omalcador furnace. I think the Typhon is <laughs> equally uh, as bad an offender in terms of its ignores cover destruction um, but yeah the uh, poor old Cerberus it's uh, just been outclassed by its brother tank it's no it's it's more resilient than a Sikar and Venator yeah. but its firepower is not not much more so but it does look very cool and it's got a flare shield I've used it before and um, yeah. yeah it's done a few things but it's a cool looking model though. It is, yeah. I really love the Spartan chassis. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Mm. I, I, and the great thing is that, you know, you've got uh, one of the things that are, are quite famous uh, for the armor is the Iron Havocs as well. Mm. So you've got a uh, 10 man, last cannon, 10 man yep. missile launcher. Yep. It's just sit them at the back and fire down range. I mean, fantastic heavy support. That's it, yeah. Uh, particularly the guys with Las Cannons, again, yeah. a very pricey squad, but hitting on twos, tank hunters, they just delete vehicles with every volley. Yeah. Especially if you combine them with an ammo dump or Kier Kier Valen. Mm. if you're playing loyalists. Uh, yeah, 10 almost guaranteed hits. And uh, with tank <laughs> hunters, yeah, they are 
very good if you find yourself across the table from them kill them with firepower because they will do the same to you quickly i was about to say you know these units like the cease tyrants and the and the heavy weapon squads they they are a bit of a target early on in the game aren't they absolutely yeah uh, yeah if i face off against them they'd be the number <laughs> one target no doubt but generally you know if you're going first you'll put them in a reasonable position you'll mm. probably get two turns of firepower out of them yeah and then they'll start to be depleted but then if your army if the if you're a play, if your opposing player is focusing on the havoc and the Terminators they're not shooting anything else that's right and that's when the tacky units can get in place to score those objectives in Dominion and that sort of thing and the other elements of the army can move in and, and kind of encircle the, the enemy I guess yeah that's it and particularly I like to um, move forward aggressively mm. with my Iron Warriors particularly rolling forward with the spot with the, the normal Land Raider chassis uh, vehicles like the Proteus mm. and the uh, Achilles as well as the Spartan yep. and uh, flying in with the Storm Eagle as well particularly works well with Hammer of Olympia, the Storm Eagle. <laughs> yeah. It is. And the Storm Eagle was great. We see a lot of Fire Raptors on the channel because the Raptor, the Fire Raptor is such an amazing model. It's got so much firepower. And then with the waist mounted order cannons, you know, they can fire independently. Mm. But we don't see too many uh, Storm Eagles. But it's a shame because they can just deliver a really, really important unit to the heart of battle, can't they? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I like to uh, actually put a big tactical squad in. Mm. Big tactical squad with extra close combat weapons, Vexilla, Sergeant with Combi Plasma, Power Fist. They can pile out and double tap their bolters, yeah. charge in. They've got the extra hand weapons, so they're still getting a lot of attacks. Yeah. And I've uh, got a tendency to put a Warsmith and a Forge Lord oh, in with them God. as well. So <laughs> it gets worse. As stubborn leadership 10 <laughs> with a Vexilla and Rad Grenades. So, yes, and crucially, it's a scoring unit. Yeah. And they're, they're just tactical Marines, but they are very good it's a, it's a lot to deal with though isn't it yeah absolutely yeah you really want your reserves to to come in if you've got a sort of unit like that it's not quite a death star because they are just tactical marines sure. but uh it's very good for delving deep into your enemy's deployment zone you can destroy units and claim objectives yeah one of the other great rules for the Warriors is that they don't suffer uh casualties for shooting sorry leadership for shooting yeah. negative modifiers rather that is a fantastic rule. Yeah, for claiming objectives in the end oh. game. It is fantastic. Yeah, if, if you can get a tactical squad that's safe from assaults because there's no enemy anywhere near, it's so hard to remove them. You have to wipe them out. Yeah, so many late games like Dominion, uh, excuse me, later on in the games like Turn 5, mm. you, there's a couple of units left on objectives and your plan is to shoot them, get them to fail leadership tests and run off and then they can't claim at the end of the game, you know. Yeah. And it's such a great tactic, particularly if you're struggling for, for stuff to destroy at the end of the game. So you, you tend to go after the objective holding uh, uh, units. But that rule for the Iron Warriors, it just keeps them in place and they are an absolute pain to shift. Oh, that's it. One tactical Marine left. And uh, he's, no, he's not running unless you assault him. Yeah. Yeah, it is uh, excellent. And it's also good for your heavy weapon squad sitting at the back as well. <laughs> because if you, if you work, wipe out half the Iron Havocs, yeah. the rest won't run. So, yeah, yeah it's just a great, uh, great piece of rules writing, I think, there for the Iron Warriors. And, uh, yeah. Excellent. We've seen it so many times where uh, a full squad perhaps loses, you know, just enough to make it that twenty-five percent check. They're close to the board, and all of a sudden, that's a fifteen-man or a twenty-man tech squad or a really, yep. really important squad just ran off the board because of that leadership test. Yeah, doesn't always happen, but when it does, you know, that's two, three, four hundred points just run off the board through to from from two dice. Yeah, it, it is your heart sinks when that happens. It's, Absolutely, it's yeah. horrendous. It's happened to my Thalax. Tons of times, you know, a full squad of nine, 550 odd points, 55 points for a squad of nine tooled up, lose enough to take a morale check, three, uh, and then they've, they've, they've run off the ball. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it is, uh, it's painful to watch. Um, yeah, fortunate the Iron Warriors don't have to No, watch it, it's, <laughs> it's so yeah, good. I miss it when I'm not using it. Uh, <laughs> really do. It, it's in a game that's governed by uh, dice and random effects, it's nice to have a little bit of stability and predictability yeah. in an army, knowing that if you're going to go to that objective or you're going to do this or you're going to pursue that, that that particular unit will not go because of that reason. Yes. And then you can have to worry about other things. So it's nice to have something solid that you can rely on every single time. So I think it's a really great rule. I love stuff that doesn't... One thing I do hate about the game is some of the random elements. And if you can mm. remove that, it makes your game a little bit more predictable and you can look at other things rather than worrying, oh, maybe, you know, that'll do this and it'll fail because of the random roll, whatever, and they'll run off. So it's really great to have that reliable kind of backup from the Iron Warriors. I think it's a, I think it's a very... Uh, 
I don't quite know what the word is, but it's a lot, it's a very understated rule that's that's very important. It is, yeah. It's just it's it's such a such a brief rule in, in yeah. their rules, and uh, when you read it, maybe the second time, you think actually that yeah. is very very good. Yeah. Because um, the other component of it, uh, well, they can re-roll pinning as well, which mm. is always handy, um, and uh, wrecker, which is very very. Um, Situational yeah. with, with grenades and melter bombs. Uh, we uh, don't see that many fortifications in use, particularly. No. So, so yeah, that, that's uh, it's balanced out that rule, I think, because the other side of it's not not particularly great. And of course, they have the bitter end as well, which can bite them. Yeah, it can. Yeah, they are stubborn. They don't know when to quit. So uh, yeah, yeah. I was just talking a little bit about that wrecker rule. That's mm. a bit of a hangover to their. Um, to their purpose they're great at bringing down fortifications yeah that's their job and and that's and it's kind of a little, bit of a link there you kind of look at it and think well I reckon I'm not too worried about it you might come across the odd fortifications you mentioned but mm. but that's more of a for me that's more of a a fluff extra yeah. rule more than anything else it makes a lot of sense fluff yeah. wise so yeah perfectly happy with it I just don't think I've ever used it no so one day one day someone will field a bastion or something and I'll be able to charge it with melter bombs well maybe we live in hope well maybe when the later yeah. black book comes out and it, it covers a siege of terror it might come in there might be yeah. a, you know you might get a release from, from Games Workshop Forge World for some extra fortifications and stuff I and mean, we might we might see more games where fortifications are used a lot more and mm. then I guess the Iron Wars would be perfectly placed to to deal with them, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Who knows? Hmm. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about Pedarabo. He is the Primarch of the Iron Warriors. He is, and what a, uh, a monster he is. He's fantastic. He is cool. Now, not just in terms of his rules. I think, uh, yeah, going back once again to the Heresy novel series, I think he is a very, very interesting character himself. Uh, his particular demeanour is a reflection of, of his legion, as is usual for a Primarch, but mm. he is uh, he's just a very interesting guy, capable of incredible rage, but mm. also uh, a polymath, a genius. So uh, that's really one of one of the things that inspired me to uh, to play Iron Warriors, Perturabo himself. And when he arrives on the table, he makes his presence felt. He is amazing. <laughs> well, I think, personally, one of the best. I think um, I think his model as well in particular is really cool. I love mm. his I love his armor that he's in. Yep. It's very bespoke. It's really heavy. Um, he gets nicknamed the Potato King as well, <laughs> yes. which I think is a yeah. really great name to describe <laughs> him. But um, I think one of the bones of contention though is his hammer. Right, Ferris's old hammer. Yeah, yeah. Ferris's hammer. Poor old Ferris. Um, I think there's an issue about that he strikes at. Uh, initiative one, whereas uh, Ferris strikes at his initiative. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, when Ferris has got it, yeah, it's not unwieldy. But yeah, it is for uh, for Perturabo for some reason. Maybe yeah. Ferris is a bit bit stronger. Much as I hate to admit it, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. But yeah, he's got the really cool hand cannon, which looks great. Um, and just the fact that he's um, the, his original model is set atop uh, one of the knight, uh, the Serastus knights, isn't he? His model yes. base. Yeah. And you can just imagine Pedarabo coming up and just swinging that hammer and, and bringing mm. lower knight. And I think it's a really fantastic kind of image for him. Yeah. The, well, the iconic image for me was uh, the Siege of Hydra Cordatus at the start of Angel Exterminator. Okay. When. Uh, the Iron Warriors are assaulting a fortress held by the Imperial Fists and it's not, not going great. It's going okay. They're scaling <laughs> the walls. And Perturabo just drops onto the battlements and just smashes everyone to pieces. And uh, just thought, what a badass. Yeah. He's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. He is pretty cool. And that's how I try and use him. Yeah. Yep. Now, Perturabo is usually found surrounded by his Iron Circle, which are these kind of like Domitar-based mm. uh, models with a massive shield and a hammer and a, and a Maximus uh, bolter on their shoulder. Have you not been tempted by the Iron Circle for the army? or uh, I think they're probably on the list. They're not high high up the list, though, because, um, I don't know, I've never, I've never come up with a tactic to use them particularly. Yeah. I think Perturabo, my personal... Preferences to deep strike him mm. with his siege tyrants. Yeah, um, he has an amazing ability where mm. when he lands, he can call down his lance strike, which is excellent. Yeah, doesn't count as him firing a weapon, so he can then use his cognis signum mm. on the tyrant terminators, um, and uh, they're hitting on twos. Then he's there protecting them with his bulk, as yeah. you say, as the potato king. <laughs> and uh, yeah, once they've mm. blown something up from deep strike they can uh, then get uh, get stuck in as well i mean yeah. he's got an excellent stat line he's very resilient one of the prime arcs that has the three up invulnerable yeah which makes him so good yeah very hard to uh 
to get through. He's also got a Nuncio Vox we can guide in, the rest mm. of the Iron Warriors, uh, Barrages, Cortex Controller. Um, yeah, he is. he's just amazing. I really do think and he's such a force multiplier as well. Mm. He gives all Terminators Deep Strike, all uh, Iron Warriors Furious Charge in the enemy deployment zone. Yeah. So he is, uh, yeah, he's a Primarch that's A, very, very tough and very effective himself. And he's also a really great force multiplier. And of course, he can still come in from reserve turn one. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So they've, they, the last mm -hmm. FAQ did rein, rein him in a bit. It's not all reserves anymore. It's just him, but still, <laughs> that's a good rule. Yeah, he's a formidable opponent, just like Horus, you know, mm. can come in. You know, Horus deep striking in your back lines without scatter and a load of just staring Terminators is super tough. And equally with P Perabo and his mm. Terminator complement, it's just such a formidable unit. You, It's one of those ones you just can't ignore when they come down. You've got to deal with it. And again, whilst Perabo is causing a distraction, yep. it's less firepower coming at a rescue force and you can move in. So um, we see Primarchs on the channel a few times. Generally, when Primarchs go into combat, they kind of just tie each other for the whole game. Oh, yeah. And we like to see Primarchs kind of not do that and go off and and, and uh, mince meat uh, other squads, which is quite interesting to see. But, um, but yeah, he's pretty cool. Comes in, deep strikes, Terminators, a lot of firepower, like you said. Mm. And we saw that to great effect recently. Well, say recently, last year we did a game where we pitted your Iron Warriors against a household of knights. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, Perturabo, he was uh, mm. amazing. Um, yeah. yeah, so if you've not watch that yet I would yeah <laughs> it's a good one to watch it's great because James demonstrates exactly what he talks about mm. deep strike use the Havocs uh, sorry the um, the Terminators and uh, cause quite a lot of damage we won't give it away if you haven't watched it but mm. he does reap a heavy toll oh yeah he was uh yeah, he was amazing. <laughs> he really good. was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Having said that, I must say I don't use him that often because we we tend just to do sort of normal size yeah. games. We don't use Lords of War that much when when David and I play. Um, <laughs> Only because I don't like it. <laughs> no, me neither. To be honest, so it's, uh, yeah, I think uh, save it for the big games. We but, do need uh, some more bigger games. Yeah. Yeah. We did. We, we so we did see a bigger game recently uh, between James and I. I commanded uh, Iron Warriors. Excuse me, Iron Hands, and you commanded the Iron Warriors. Yes, we yeah. did a big tank battle on an eight for six, didn't we? It was, yeah, and uh, that was Hammer of Olympia, and uh, yeah, I flew in with my Warsmith and my Forge Lord and the Tactical yeah. Marines in the Storm Eagle. So didn't do much that game, but it was all right though. Oh yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah, <laughs> it was all right. okay. <laughs> it was yeah. very very good. <laughs> Uh, one of the things I love about your army in particular as well is that you've got quite a large wall of dreadnoughts there. You've got two mm. levies, two Dorettos, and a couple of uh, Contemptors there as well. Yeah. Um, for me, a, a Leviathan Dreadnought, particularly Death Guard or, um, or Iron Warriors, that sort of thing, it, it's a massive bulk and it adds a ton of firepower and it kind mm. of fits in with the aesthetic of the army as well, I think. Yeah, it does. As I say, I see these guys as a siege assault battalion yeah. and uh, I think that's what Leviathans are designed for. They just wade through fire and just yeah. smash in. Yeah, great. I'm a big fan of Dreadnoughts. I wish I used the Derrideos more. Okay. Um, I find because they're heavy support slots, mm. um, it's, it's a very popular slot when you have Havocs and Siege Tyrants and Sicarans. so yeah. maybe I should uh, stomp out the uh, Derrideos a bit more because they're, they're a fairly handy, uh, yeah, yeah. fairly handy choice. Not bad. They can be very good. Mm. Just going to have a little bit more talk about the HQs. Yep. Um, obviously, the Iron Warriors are, I think, I know you said they can be both loyalists and traitors, but mm. they are classically a traitor force, aren't yep. they? Um, but you do have Kerr Valen in there as well. Yes, yeah, he's the uh, the loyalist warsmith from uh, Paramar. Yeah, mm. and, and there's there's lots of conversions for uh, uh, for Kerr Valen out there. There's not an official model for him. No, no, um, which seems a shame, really, because it would be nice to get a you know a loyalist and a traitor HQ from Forge World. But I guess you know it allows you to put your own slant on things. Mm. And but you know, do you use Kerr Valen a lot? Do, do you, is your preference towards a traitor or a legion or, or um, or a loyalist force, or you kind of mix between the two? I can go either way, to be honest. It. No, that's it. I think both of the Iron Warriors' unique characters uh, are very good. Keir Valen is obviously the, the better of the two. He costs more points. He's a full warsmith, mm. and he has some excellent rules. Um, you know, re-rolling the ones. He's got a Cortex Control, a Paragon Blade, mm. all the rest of it. He's very good. But Erasmus Golg is also a very good HQ choice. He's not quite as good as a Praetor, but the ability to take Terminators as troops... Mm without having to use your right of war to achieve that is is excellent, especially if you're using something like the Hammer of Olympia, where you have to take three compulsory troops choices. Yeah. If you can turn those into Terminators, 
no problem. Yeah, Although everyone likes more Terminators. Um, yeah, yeah. So he's he's good as well. The only problem with him, of course, is spoiler alert. He does die quite soon oh. after his farm five, and because I'm such a narrative guy, I can't I can't field him in the late heresy because I know Pollux has squashed his head. <laughs> so. this, this is true. You know, this, the story is evolving. You know, we are mm. getting closer to terror. Yep. Um, you know, Black Library are bringing out books that are kind of chronicling. I can't exactly remember how many books are doing it. I think it might be six books. Mm. Uh, but we are getting closer to. Um, to terror and we will you know we will explore that story and all these characters that we've collected over the last sort of three four five years no. some of them will die yeah some will come to ascension you know some will meet their 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 opposite number from different legions uh, across the battlefield and i'm really really excited to see where that goes yeah me too i've got some ideas about a lot of the famous characters mm. from the heresy i really want to see yeah what the future holds for them yeah, it's it, it's it's a really interesting story. It, you know, I think for a long time the heresy hasn't really moved forward very much, but now it's mm. you can really feel it gathering momentum, really yeah. getting to that point towards the end. And there's lots of rumours, which I'm not going to start spreading, but there's lots of rumours about lots of different models coming out and and maybe um, uh, demonic versions of the Primarchs and stuff, which okay. we're really hoping to see. You know, maybe two three years down the line. Um, I, I still think in the heresy in general, there's a whole ton of models which need to come out. Yep. Um, you know, um, Dark Mechanicum are, are coming up next, which yep. I'm really looking forward to. And I can definitely see a lot of people collecting a bit of Dark Mechanicum and allying them win with uh, Iron Warriors. In yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's I think, the perfect match, really, isn't it? In fluff wise and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and for utility as well. Great. I think it'd be quite cool, and in particular as well, you know, the uh, they might have to change some of the rules because you know you've got cortex controllers that stand on some of your models. Yeah, and it'd be interesting to see how the cortex controller uh, rule changes or merges with the dark mechanicum stuff. It, it might mm. not be the same game mechanic, but uh, and this is not based on anything. It's just my own sort of ramblings, really. But it will be interesting to see if that if that develops with books later on and see how that works out. But yeah. uh, it could be quite cool to see some dark mech mixed in with the iron warriors. I think I think we'll see a lot of that in the future. Um, moving on a little bit, you know, one question which I'm going to ask everybody that, that comes on the channel to do this feature is is that um, your hopes for the Horus Heresy and, and, and maybe your armies, you know, what, what are you looking forward to most? What, what's your, what are you looking forward to? Personally, I'd quite like to see Dark Angels appear. Yeah. I've been waiting a while for them. I mean, obviously, they, they have a very brief, a brief rule set. But, uh, yeah, for the first, uh, first Legion, they are... Um, they're lacking. He heavily delayed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it would be nice to see them. But personally, I just hope that the heresy continues. It's my favourite uh, game yeah. system that Games Workshop have ever done. I've played a lot. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it's because I love the the uh, Horace Heresy novel series and the Black Books are so well produced. They're so chock full of information yeah. and they're fascinating. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the best game, I think, that Games Workshop have ever done. And... Uh, I hope it stays uh, stays the course. We keep going forwards and keep adding more units. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's always a scouring afterwards, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert. There's so much yeah. to explore. You know, um, the one things I'm I'm really looking forward to are are um, perhaps some more models for 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 rules they've written and not brought out models for. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Uh, but you are right. The the, the story is so rich. I don't think Horus Heresy would be as popular if it didn't have such the rich history behind it in the, mm. in the books as well. And and you mentioned earlier about um, Golg making uh, Terminators of troops. I mean, who doesn't want an army of Terminators? Oh, absolutely. And, yep. and, and the beauty with Heresy is you can more or less pick a right of war, uh, which does change the absolute dynamic of the force, whether you're yeah. collecting Bullet Angels or Ultramarines or Iron Warriors, it doesn't matter. You can. There are classic builds, I think. Yeah. Particularly with Iron Warriors, I think they get pigeonholed into a very specific build. Mm. But, and that's fine. If you want to play classic Iron Warriors or Blood Angels or Ultrains, whatever, that's great. But with these Rite of Wars and all these different extra characters, they give you those little extra units here, something there. You can pretty much build any force you want. Absolutely. I mean, I think when people first hear Iron Warriors, they immediately think the Iron Fire, yeah. which is reasonable because, you know, that it fits perfectly with the Iron Warriors fluff and it's very effective. A lot of Iron Warriors players use it. Yeah. Um, but they're equally capable of, of going forward in assault. In, in fact, their Legion rules really 
lend themselves to kind of anything really yeah. they're not they're not got these very, like the white scars have a very specific set of legion rules mm. you know if you really want to make use of them what sort of army you're going to be picking the iron warriors they just have some decent all-round rules mm. which means you can you can go any way with them and um yeah i, I love them for that really it's great solid reliable and predictable i think is a yeah. good some, some good words to associate with iron warriors mm. You know, we mentioned earlier about having some of the random results and losing units, but for me, they are an absolute backbone and, and they, they kind of do what they say on the tin to quote a famous no phrase. They do. That's it. They are very cool. Mm. I think you'll agree it's really great to see someone's collection laid out in a, in a lovely looking formation to show its absolute majesty and, and, to, and to have a look at it. Um, James, I really enjoyed setting this army up with you and then kind of going through the units and talking about it. Me too, mate. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for giving me a chance to uh, lay it all out on such a great looking board. And uh, yeah, it's satisfying after spending so long yeah. on an army tinkering with all specific characters and units. And sometimes uh, you can't see the wood for the trees. So it's nice to actually stand back and yeah. see the whole forest once you've uh, you've finished filing off uh, power sword guards. <laughs> 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 We see a lot of photos on Facebook and Instagram where people have laid out their army uh, on the kitchen table. Mm. Mrs. is cooking dinner in the background and yeah. they've laid out their blood angels or their whatever's out on the table. So um, this was a, a feature we've been dying to do for such a long time, as we mentioned right at the top of the show. Um, and we would love to do more of these. We want to try and get out one showcase a month. Um, I will probably be, be next with the mechanic and I can finish the final four vehicles that I'm working oh, on. Oh, yeah, they're looking good so far. So I'd like to good. finish. Um, and then we would like to get you uh, on the channel to uh, um, film a game, of course. We'd love to have your army for the channel. Uh, but to get them in, uh, lay it out, talk to you specifically why you collected that particular force, why you like about it, the rules. We'll talk about the rules, uh, you know, exactly like James and I have done today, but with your army. So if you would like that opportunity, then please uh, email us. It's just david at the 30 kchannelcom uh, We're based just outside of Huntingdon, which is near Peterborough. Um, and we'll perhaps need you for, we've been a minute, for about a couple of hours, haven't we? Yeah, a good time. Two, three hours. Uh, we'll try and make a bit of a day of it. We'll perhaps maybe get a game in with James or I or something mm. to make it worth the trip and then we'll do your army showcase and then uh, and then we'll, we'll film it and uh, and stick it out on the internet for people to see. I think it's really, really important to to share your hobby and mm. um, a, a lot of the time you see on Facebook in particular, someone says, oh, I'm going to collect this particular army, what would you recommend? And, uh, and, and I get that emailed to me quite a lot and my answer is always collect the army that you want to paint and play. Yeah, you've got to be passionate about about your army for whatever reason. If you like the rules, if you like the way they look, if you yeah. like the the background um, and the character, preferably all of the above. And then you have passion for it, and it will encourage you to keep going and um, yeah. yeah, and build your army up and and play as much as you can. So I think that's the really key point. Um, mm. I think, and I, I don't wish to generalise, but I think a lot of people they and I do this. I I write a list and then I and then I I buy it, I paint it, and then I play with it. But a lot of people are unsure about the rules or they're unsure about how to build a particular list. But I think the reasons why you build the army have to be, as James mentioned, they have to be personal to you. You know, you don't have to write. A cookie cutter was a bit of a thing mm -hmm. years ago in 40K, yeah. wasn't it? Where everyone was kind of collecting exactly the same list. If you collected Eldar or Tau or whatever, then you had a very particular list. But I think the, the beauty of the heresy that we talked about earlier is, is that you can have an army of Terminators you can have an army of tanks in armoured spearhead. Yeah. Um, you know, or you can do destroyers or you can do whatever you want. Or mm. we see a lot of Imperial Fist Breacher armies, which I think are just absolutely super cool. Oh, yeah. They're really great. Oh, it's an iron warrior, I should probably say. No, 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 no. no, no. Um, so so that is that is my advice. Collect the army that you want to paint and play. And if you, and if you are collecting what you want, then you will pursue it. There's so mm. many armies on trading sites that are halfway through because they've lost passion. Yeah, that's it. Can't be bothered yeah. and they just get sold, which is a shame. That's it. You need to keep that passion going. And as, as you say, if you have an army in mind, then you can always expand it so you can think, oh, now I can do this style of army. Now yeah. I can do that style of army. And in the end, you'll end up hopefully with an army where you can play all sorts of different ways and still enjoy mm. it. And um, 
yeah and uh still be passionate about it after years yeah I, and that and that's exactly the key or i go to I, I used to go to a lot of tournaments not so much now but i am trying to pick that up for this year and next but you generally see the same people playing the same lists mm. and that's fine at a tournament but I've changed my list a few times now. I, I played the, um, the Legio Sabnetica for probably a year, and now I'll probably play the army I'm currently got for another year or so, and then we're going to move on to Solar. But it's good, like you've said, to have lots of different troops to choose from, mm. units, and then you can vary it up. That's it, and some days you can just go, I'm going to use some units I haven't used in ages, just, yeah. to, just to mix it up, and uh, yeah, it keeps, keeps it uh, interesting yeah as well so and and you will see that on the channel you'll see james and i play each other quite often uh, and, and and i think it's fair to say james you've got quite a reasonable collection i think that's mm, a fair word yeah, there's a few legions yeah. the character on. <laughs> but the beauty about the armies that james has got is is that there are five six ten thousand points of whatever and we can pick and choose and, and showcase different styles of those armies which i think is really really cool yeah and it's nice to have that flexibility rather than just rinse and repeat rinse and repeat mm. all the time um Anyway, I think I've waffled enough about variations, excuse me, unless. So we would love to get you on the channel. Email us, contact us. Uh, we'd love to get you on. Um, James, I've had an absolute blast doing this with you. Yeah, me too, mate, me too. Good stuff. All right, so we will hopefully see you in the next Army Showcase with, uh, with my Mechanicum. And then after that, we will then hopefully see you on the channel with your Army Focus. Uh...